Oh yeah. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Adrian Graphics and Marketing channel. Today, I'm doing a tutorial. It's not a tutorial where I'm gonna be showing you how to use the tools specifically. I'm gonna talk about a couple of the tools, but this one is specifically to compare Adobe Photoshop, and Adobe Illustrator, and which one you should use. I know this is a big deal for many people. They don't know when to switch back and forth, why use Illustrator, why use Photoshop. So before we jump into my screen share real quick, I wanna talk about that and explain the differences face to face here and then we'll jump in and I'll show you firsthand. Photoshop is great for photo manipulation, for taking existing images and editing and cutting and warping and correcting existing images that you have that you wanna make better, that you wanna improve, photography, things like that. Uh, or even print designs. A lot of print designs that you get that are flattened already that don't have layers is a great tool for that. And even in print design in general, we use Photoshop a lot. If it's multiple pages, you're gonna wanna watch or use InDesign, which is a completely different program and another tutorial for another day. But Photoshop is really great if you're creating a brochure or a business card, things like that. Adobe Illustrator is great if you wanna take images and use them on large format things like billboards, signs, trade show displays, anything that you want to be crystal clear and crisp. Uh, it's really great to use Photoshop and uh, for photo manipulation and smaller printed items but for larger items you're going to need to be able to scale them and them not become pixelated or jagged edges you've seen probably some of those jagged edges if you've ever used photoshop before and blew up an image there's a difference between photoshop and illustrator that's very important and the main one is number one is raster versus vector raster is a really great uh tool to use for photo manipulation you can move pixels around basically is all it means it's just pixels and vector is anchor points. So there's actually anchor points and paths. So I'm gonna jump in here and show you this firsthand. So let's just jump into Illustrator first and I'll give you an example. The best way to describe Illustrator is paths and anchor points. And if I actually do an outline of this, you can see these are my exact paths that I've created using my pen tool, which is, where is it, Olives? And here we go, this is the pen tool. I, you can create a path. So I can just go in here and honestly just show you an example. I can click a path here. Click a path here, click a path here, click the path here, and these are all anchors, right? And there's four anchor points and four paths. One, two, three, four. Four paths and four anchor points. That's what makes this box. If I turn that off now, you can see I had my fill colors black. That's why that was there. Now I'm gonna delete this off here, and I can go back to my paths. You can see in Illustrator, I did my whole logo in Illustrator, and then I have a shadow, which is another layer. If I double click into this, you can see here, this is another path that sits on top of it that just gives this A just a little bit more dimen dimension and depth, which I really, really like. So you can do things like that, very sim simple and clean gradients and layers on top of layers uh, to give it the different depth and dimension. I could actually have put a gradient on this if I wanted to. Whoops, if I actually selected this specific layer, I'll show you here, I can put a gradient layer on top of this. So I can go, let's see here, we'll just pick a gradient like this, gradient type maybe. We'll go in here and we can just change this. You can see here, I can make this maybe just yellow. So you can see here, I did a circular yellow inside of here. And if I flip to the other side, I can do the same thing. I can go red. You can see here, it totally changes the look of how that looked when we started, right? Adds a lot more brightness and color to it. So you can add gradients inside of your vectors as well, but that's as far as I would really recommend you going. There's some gradient meshes, but gradients are, are basically kind of the maximum of what you're gonna wanna do in Adobe Illustrator in terms of photo manipulation. Uh, most, of the, most times you wanna keep it very simple. If you're designing a logo, you wanna do that in Adobe Illustrator because you're gonna be able to scale that logo for multiple applications, for signs, for banners, trade shows, business cards, and it's, it's usable for many things. I actually use Illustrator more than I do Photoshop. I really love Illustrator, it's a great program. Uh, I spend most of my time in that because I'll do a lot of logo design, brand design, icons. Uh, you'll see a lot of companies that are using icons in their graphics now. What I'll do is I work back and forth between the two, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute, but I wanna jump over to Photoshop and just show you the clear difference. So let's just open up another file. Here's one from my Project Grow Show. You may have seen the last episode of Matt Bedreau. This is, and don't get on me here if you're a designer and you're looking at my file structure here. Most times I take the time to layer and name all my files, uh, but sometimes I don't. And this is one of those, I created some groups, but I didn't name them. I think I named one or two of them, but I kept everything pretty much uh, unorganized, which is not good. I don't recommend that. 
uh, but I just was running low on time. So if you look at Photoshop here and I take this image, I was able to cut the background out of both myself and Matt. So you can see here's a really neat capability to be able to go in and actually change uh, the look of the photo. I had a whole background of me at my office and I had a photo of him at the office. You can see here, here's one of Axel that I dropped in here. So you can drop in photos, cut out backgrounds, do all kinds of really great things with Photoshop. But here's the problem. If I wanted to take this graphic here for some reason and blow it up on a billboard or something large, like a huge TV screen at an event, as I scale this thing up and I go bigger and bigger and bigger, and I zoom in here, you're gonna start to see the pixels come to light. And so you can see here, one, two, three. There's all these pixels and they, depending on the kind of layout that you use when you're doing Photoshop, it could be 72 pixels per inch. It could be 300 pixels per inch. It's all about the resolution. So the more pixels per inch, the clearer it's gonna be, the bigger you can make that image. But you gotta be careful with doing that. So things become pixelated and very grainy and very jagged. You can see here as I, as I blow this up, you can see it becomes jagged and grainy and blurry. That's a terrible look. Uh, but that's the, the really the drawback that you have with Photoshop. Now here's a, a great thing that you can do is what I've done a lot is I can work and I can go back and forth. Now that I've taken this image, I can actually go over here and I can drag this image. I selected that layer. I can go over here to Adobe Illustrator. And if I wanna put this on my banner, if it's a big enough image, I can just drop it in here. Boom, look at that. Now I can actually print this door window. I think it was like 24 inch wide door graphic and I could actually put this and print this. And this could be on my vinyl for my door or any graphics that I wanna put, as long as it's big enough. This is a vector file, I made it large enough, so it shows me that that image that I used in here was a really high quality, large image, and I didn't have to scale it down, but you can also go in here and scale it down if you want to. Boom, let's see, I can do that as well. So you're able to drag back and forth between the two. I've done the same thing where I've taken like the shield for my Adrian Graphics logo, and I can go over here, I can copy it, Command C or Control C, I can go over to Photoshop, and I can say, hey, I want my shield right in the middle. And I can drop my shield in here, I can make it, whoops, I can make it bigger if I want to, and I can hit enter. And it's gonna drop it in there nice and clean and clear in a vector format. Um, I actually pasted it in, if you notice, I'll do that again. It gives you an option. You can do a smart object, which is gonna keep it kind of a vector image. It'll be referenced off of the Adobe Illustrator file, or I can just paste it as pixels, which is raster, as we talked about. So I can paste it in here as pixels, right? If I do it, real quick, I wanna show you this, as a smart object, and it's linked to Adobe Illustrator, check this out. So if I go in here, let's just say, there it is. It's gonna take a second to link. Once that's linked up, if I actually go into Illustrator now, and let's just say I wanna take out something out of in here and I do this by accident, and let's just say I take out, I'm like, I'm gonna take out the 2007 in here. Really, there we go, and it'll open up the smart object in Illustrator, and then I can edit this one. This is where it'll work. Sorry for the technical issue there. There we go, let's just take out a couple things just so you can see an example. Let's just get this. Come on, completely out of here. It's taking me a minute to isolate all these objects here. There we go. Okay, so we got that out of there, right? So we're gonna save this now. Now watch what happens. If I go back over to Photoshop, look at it, it disappeared. But if I go and undo all that, and I save it again, boom, it's back. So you can link these files in between the two, but when you edit one file, the smart object, then it's gonna actually change it on your Photoshop file. So you just wanna remember that, that's another important deal. Um, and then just being able to know when to use Photoshop and when to use Illustrator. If you're doing a lot of print design, you can start it in, in um, Photoshop and then move everything over that you need or create what you need that are the assets in Illustrator. If they're illustrations, any kind of artwork, remember Illustrator is about illustrations and design, where Photoshop is more of photo manipulation, artwork, photography, um, and photo correction and even print design. You can do some cool layered backgrounds and special effects and there's just a wide range of things that you can do in Photoshop that you can't do in Illustrator. Drop shadows, blending things, lots of cool stuff. And you'll notice here that the color palettes are very, very similar. So I know this is a long-winded explanation between Photoshop and Illustrator, but really it's vector versus raster. Um, it's being able to use wide format versus smaller format stuff, print design versus web design, and having those nice, crisp, clean objects. Are you using, uh, doing logo design? Are you doing print design? Are you doing web design? If you're doing a lot of web design, I would highly encourage you to use both Illustrator and Photoshop, but create any of the images that you want to be really clear on the website in vector, and then save those things as SVGs. Those are scalable vector graphics. Those images are much smaller. You can put them on websites and no matter what device that somebody's on, tablet, iPad, um, MacBook, Surface Pro, whatever, it'll remain clear and crisp and clean. And that's what you want at the end of the day is you want your stuff to look crisp, clean, and clear and uh, no rastered images that are blurry and jagged. So that's what I got for you today. Hope this helped, helped you guys out. 
Thank you guys for tuning in with me. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe and share this with a friend of mine or friend of yours, I should say, uh, that is using Photoshop too much and not using Illustrator and their stuff's coming out all blurry. Call them out. Shoot them this video. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. God bless. And as always, keep looking up.